Uh, just to kind of give you a quick brief background about what was going on, we all know about the bill. We know about the proposed 20,000 percent increase. What's happened is they really don't care much about premium cigars, but where their heart lies is not in hurting some of the Caribbean countries and what's going on in Honduras, Nicaragua, and Dominican Republic. They're aware that it's going to hurt jobs, it's going to create poverty, and a lot of people are employed there. They also know that the 20,000% tax is a tax that probably won't fly with the bill, and hence they're trying to reduce it. At this point, what they're trying to do is negotiate a dollar cap on premium cigars. 2,000% increase, that's too high, and obviously we're going to keep battling this issue till we get it to where we want. What we did today is we got on the phone with some of the associations that are in the manufacturing part. In Nicaragua, there's a strong association led by Nestor Placencia Jr. They're trying to get all the Honduras factories, the box factories, the manufacturers together. Dominican already has an association, and the goal is we're gonna draft certain letters and have them all sign off on these letters, send them over to Randell's office, showing them that this dollar cap is still going to affect them drastically, create loss of jobs, etc. The other thing we're trying to get them to do is to contact the high-end government officials. For example, on Monday they have a meeting with the U.S. Ambassador to Honduras, U.S. Ambassador to Nicaragua. They're going to pressure the State Department. They're getting their top government officials to go to Washington, speak up on all the effects it's going to have in the Caribbean countries. There's a treaty called the Central American Free Trade Act, CAFTA. The basis of the treaty and the law treaty is the following. Any products made, including cigars, in the Central American countries that are sold in the U.S. market cannot have a duty imposed on them. Furthermore, if that product is then taken to the retail level and the federal government imposes a duty on the product, that constitutes a violation of that Fair Trade Act. So we have CAA looking at it, other attorneys looking at it, uh, some of the catalog companies' attorneys looking at it, and we're looking at it ourselves. We don't have a definitive answer. If that is true, that's a great loophole. That would be wonderful for us, but we're going to keep fighting on until we make sure. Now it's time to attack Congress, because that's really where this is going to melt down into some sort of negotiation. So hence, you've got Charles Ranger's fax numbers, phone numbers, emails, this is just a letter for all of us here. It's ultimately going to turn into, we're going to get rid of all the Rocky Patel stuff here, and it's going to have like a ballot box, signature box, so every individual, we're going to get it out to the consumers, to all the, the, the big catalog companies, the internet sites, the retailers, they're all willing to participate and get it, get it to the consumer base so we can actually have these letters and other letters like that by myself, by Christian, different letters created that can be pummeled to their offices so that they see there's a voice that still has a problem with this 2,000% tax if it's negotiated down to $1 at this point. What happened, the, uh, the reason why this thing came all of a sudden and, and, and there was such a rush with this, this thing has really been out since March, April, it was kind of making some noise. We never really worried about it because we saw a $10 tax, but everybody, bar none, thought it was a typo. Everybody really thought it was going to go from $0.05 cents to $0.10. Cents. So it's not until last Friday, Thursday or Friday, when we get confirmation that it is in fact a $10 increase. So, of course, we get everybody activated. And being that we're three weeks from the trade show, you know, it was uh, a few guys in Miami, we got together and, say, and s decided to get the entire group of manufacturers together. And uh, everybody, even the guys from Naples, they drove all the way up to Miami. We had 27 people representing 19 manufacturers. Even lateral industries, the guys from Action Label were involved, the guys from Zycar, different companies, they were all involved in this process. And we decided to draft this letter and try a grassroots effort. And, and in the process of doing a grassroots effort, which we printed out 200,000 petition forms, you know, one part of that petition form would be obsolete now because this bill is changing rapidly. Because of the pressure that's been applied to all the, uh, all the uh, senators, and of course now in Congress, the pressure we're going to start applying to them as well. All right, the entire country is getting the same letter. The entire petition form, they got the fax numbers in the back. Because what we're trying to do is, if we can get a 35% response from that stuff, with 200,000 letters, if senators could get 70,000 of these petitions, they'll start paying attention to us. I think we're doing it in a very, very civilized manner. We're not being fanatical. We're not being offensive. We're simply stating the facts in this thing. Uh, Mel Martinez, we've been very fortunate at converting Mel Martinez from what we understood. He was for it. 
Now he's against it. The reason why we hit the road in Florida so much, we had similar meetings, these town hall type meetings. We had them in Miami, we had them in, in Palm Beach, we had them in, in Orlando, Jacksonville, Tampa, and this is the last one that we're having. We're trying to hit the 60 or 70 percent cluster of customers because we want to make sure that Florida has the strongest showing of all only because 90 percent of the industry is housed in Florida. We're more a Florida industry than the citrus industry. The way the bill sits, George Bush has committed to veto this bill several times. He said it publicly oftentimes because basically the S-chip, I'm sure everybody knows what the S-chip is already, is it, to fund health care for, uh, for uh, families that are above the Medicaid level, but still low-income families. I want to say the number is 23, 24,000. Somebody jump in if you no, know the exact number. 33,000. Is it 30, 33,000? All right, thank you. So they want to raise that to 80,000 or 85,000 and include children, defining children as those 25 years or younger. Right. So if they're looking for 35 billion now, I mean, using simple math, who here would pay 350 bucks to insure your kid when all you have to do is pay 15 bucks? So that number could easily turn into two or 300 billion within two years. So that's one thing that that's the one part that Bush is is opposing because he doesn't want to see uh, you know federal medicine or nationalized medicine. Uh, Rangel said the gentleman he was talking about that the head of the Ways and Means Committee he he said that we've been getting away with murder so far at five cent on a five cent uh, cap. You know we obviously here everybody in this room we're going to disagree with him. What he said is there will be a tax increase on cigars eventually. What we're trying to define is, is how much and trying to fight it. So if we can establish some sort of precedent already, because if it's not this, it's going to be to fund something else, and it's going to be a continuous process. I mean, that's how politics works. The government needs money. They love tobacco money. The entire country receives, from what I read, $14 billion. 2% of all state budgets depend on tobacco tax. All these guys care about our numbers. They have two stacks in their office. They have the yeas and the nays. So we have to make sure that, that the nay stack is this big and there are enough yeses. They do not want to see the premium cigar business, the premium cigars out of business. I mean, they, they want to go after cigarettes and, and the irony is that there's a study which I have here, it was done in 1990, published in 1997, which actually says that the lower the income level and the lower the level of education, the more people smoke cigarettes. And the higher the level of education, the higher the income level, more people smoke cigars. So the irony is, that this bill is actually a usage fee for people who smoke cigarettes. They're going to tax the same the same people that are that are that are getting the benefits are paying for it. Uh, what they're talking about basically for new smokers needed, and this is a fact. By 2011, you're looking at 3.2 million new smokers needed to fund this. By 2017, you're looking at 22.4 million new smokers needed to fund this. I mean, we can say that, okay, the, the health of church is benefiting a 10-year-old kid right now, but they want him smoking in 10 years. I mean, <laughs> bottom line. What we're really trying to do is delineate a clear line between cigarettes and what we do. To show it's an artistic industry, it's a cultural icon, it's transcended over time, and, you know, it, it's something that great people have smoked cigars in the past, they'll smoke them in the future. This phenomenon is here to stay. It's a luxury item. It's unique. It's different. We don't mind paying a small tax to help all social causes, but we're certainly not going to be put out of business because of it, and we're certainly not going to work for the government. All these things are things that they need to be educated about. The level of poverty, Donnelly, Honduras, where we both make cigars, 80% of the employment in that town is from the cigar industry. Esteli, Nicaragua, it's the same thing. I mean, you had, when we were there in the early 70s, late 70s, I mean, rampant crime, major, Poverty, kids were running around the streets, nobody's going to school. Now they have a university there, they have a brand new hospital there. I mean, it's totally changed what's going on there. You know, we're building schools there, we donate money, we do a lot of good. So all that stuff ultimately affects this country. More money they have, more trade we can do with them. So there's a bigger thing here that goes on and all these things have to be expressed to them, taught to them. And the only way it's gonna happen is by one-on-one -on -one meetings showing that you have the passion and care. The greatest thing that's happened with this bill is it's really brought us all together to realize that we need to stand together as a group and have a uniform voice.